Today I'm going to talk to you about kestrels. So uh, I'm Robert Fuller, a wildlife artist, and I love these little guys. I absolutely love kestrels and I've been studying them really closely since uh, 2006, so quite a long time ago. So uh, my story all started with this little guy. This is a male kestrel in his first winter and he was in the garden uh, hovering over a patch of rough grass that we had and he was really struggling in his first winter. His uh, feathers were all fluffed up, his wings were hanging below his uh, tail, which shows he's uh, really struggling uh, to find enough food. So I caught him uh, a few mice and voles and I popped them uh, in on a post in the rough grass and I set up a little hide. And this was the start of my uh, kestrel obsession. It's uh, been a fabulous journey, but this was Mr. Kez and uh, he, he soon got used to me. These, these kestrels are in major decline across the UK. On the world here, we still have relatively good, good numbers. Uh, but nationwide, they've literally just disappeared in some areas. So I'll show you another photograph of him in his, uh, you know, showing his plumage. So you can see he's got grey on his rump there at the base of his tail. So some of the older females will get this grey effect um, actually on the tails more than on the rump. Uh, and then he goes through into his uh, breeding plumage uh, gradually over the next few years. And hopefully we've got something to show you of him where he's absolutely looking beautiful. But this is him uh, uh, the following year, so he's get, getting a little bit more grey in his tail, more grey in his head. So this is uh, a, a male kestrel and uh, he's prospecting a nest box here. Uh, and this is beach dump where the tawny owls often hang out. And we'll just show the next clip. What's our next clip, Will? The next clip is uh, these ones. Oh yeah, this is super in, in winter. Uh, this is Mr. and Mrs. Kez in winter. Uh, the snow's falling down and I've put some food on a branch. You know, many of people have even watching have seen I put food and the snow's fallen so hard it's covered everything over. And this is, uh, you know, just magic. I love filming in the snow. There's nothing quite like it. It just literally transforms the landscape up here within a matter of... Uh, hours or, or even less you suddenly have this landscape that looks a bit uh, like it does today uh, all browns and uh, dull, dull greens but in winter we get this wonderful snow quite often and uh, you know it looks absolutely stunning here but these two you know they, they form a very very strong bond throughout the year they don't simply sort of pair up in the uh, in the spring these form a really strong bond and uh, we can show you sort of some clips of when they prospect different nest boxes. Sure, this one. Yes, this is uh, Mr. Kez uh, vying for uh, a nest site here. This is our new kestrel. We actually lost Mr. and Mrs. Kez uh, last year, which we've got a video on YouTube about, which we can uh, make a suggestion if you want to learn more about our kestrels at the end. So uh, these are our new kestrels uh, prospecting different, different nest sites. And this was fabulous to see that we actually got a new pair. I got so fond of my old kestrels. He, had, he was with us for 13 years, 13 long years of studying this kestrel. And he had uh, a few different females over those years. And some years he actually managed to uh, hold on to two females, two years running. He had a mistress down the valley as well with another nest. And that was a fascinating story to sort of follow him bobbing backwards and forwards to the... Uh, different nest sites, but this is showing me courtship. Uh, this is uh, probably, when was this probably taken, Will, this one? Early, early spring? Early this, this year, yeah. Yes, this was taken early spring. I was looking at the foliage, there's no green in the out, so very early spring before the leaves have come out, and he's wooing her in with a uh, freshly caught vole, and this is magic to see. So this is our new Mr. and Mrs. Kez, Mr. and Mrs. Kez 2, uh, and we were you know, I was absolutely delighted to see that we got kestrels taking up our nest boxes are here again because I really did miss our old Mr. and Mrs. Kestrel. He was with us 13 years and disappeared last autumn and she unfortunately passed away in the nest. But this is the feeding post where we feed them uh, and this was a fabulous thing for us to see the new pair coming in uh, and we followed their breeding season this year which was a massively dramatic uh, breeding season uh, so we've followed the, their whole story through this year 
with an absolutely stunning bird. And this gives you a sense of scale. Uh, we've got a male kestrel here against a magpie. And uh, the magpie is pretty confident. He thinks he can hold his own with the kestrel here. And to some extent it can, you know, jackdaws will vie for their nest sites and they, uh, there can be some real battles uh, for these nesting sites when the uh, jackdaws have a real technique, they're very similar size to a magpie, but have a very clever technique where they gang up in huge numbers to overthrow uh, a kestrel or a little owl from a nest site. And once they've done that, they then fight amongst themselves. They won't try it with our tawny owls uh, too much. They have tried it occasionally, but tawny owls literally is as you've seen if you view our videos, tawny owls have absolutely no nonsense and uh, can easily hold their own against uh, these smaller birds. This is, uh, oh, this is a clip of this year's young, absolutely stunning. These are all the young kestrels. You can see how absolutely pristine they are there, new, new feathers. And we could get the whole clutch on there all at once and plus the female and sometimes the male, it was literally full of kestrels this feeding post and this is just out in my studio window there about 60 meters away so I can sit here actually painting uh, the kestrels and I can look outside and I can see them uh, I think is that the f no these are all young ones still so this is the female kestrel from this year I knew Mrs Kes and uh, you know she was a very special bird she managed to hold their own this year against the breeding season with all sorts of uh, difficulties with uh, the tawny owl uh, and jackdaws actually trying to destroy her nest. So which clip should we show next, Will? Is that the big one now? The big one? <laughs> oh, this is uh, fabulous. This is Barney, our male barn owl. Um, and this is the female kestrel. And she uh, is a particularly feisty female kestrel. They all think they're in charge of this valley. Uh, but this is shot with a GoPro, GoPro 7, uh, 100 frames a second, so you can see, um, you know, when you slow this movement down, it's absolutely fabulous. Uh, but this, these interactions happen over and over again, that the female kestrel thinks she's in charge around here, and that's just incredible. You'd never see anything like this with a human eye. Those fabulous wing beaks. So the kestrels in general are, are much uh, faster than the barn owl, uh, but when it gets into battles inside nest boxes, the barn owl can often win, but the terri uh, terrier mentality of a kestrel, they go in with such force uh, that they can sometimes actually overthrow uh, barn owls from a nest site. But the barn owls have this incredible reach uh, that they can keep the kestrels back. Uh, and grab onto them. This is, whoa, look at that one. We'll do a re replay of that in slow motion. Just coming into dusk and the female kestrel can't resist just clipping Barney on the back of the head there. So, uh, yes, that's some of our kestrel sort of stories. Have we got another video, Will, have we? That's all, show? oh, we have one bit which we can show at the end. It's a, yeah. a clip from one of our YouTube videos which you've got as suggested videos below. Yeah. Um, but should we do some? Yeah, I'll questions. Some questions, please. Yeah, it would be great. So, Robert Shaw on Facebook asks, what mm. is a kestrel's life expectancy? Oh, wow. That's a good question. So, in the wild, it's a very different thing to happen, happens in captivity. So, in captivity, you'll get a kestrel up into their high teens uh, and perhaps a little bit more. Mr. Kez, the original Mr. Kez, he, he passed away at age 13 here. He was a wild bird, but he was uh, looked after by myself, so he would have lived you know, slightly longer than natural life, but I should suspect, I don't know the average lifespan, but it'd be within, within well, well below 10 years, the average uh, in the wild. You'd be looking at five, six, seven, probably. So Michael R. Wells on Facebook asks, what kind of kestrel are they and how many in your area? Uh, so in our area, we, we just call them the kestrel here. It's very simple, what, what sort are they? Uh, so in our country, we've just got one kestrel, so it, it keeps life very uh, simple. But we just, you know, call it like the common kestrel. Uh, Will's on it now to find you. Uh, common kestrel. Common yeah, kestrel. Yeah, common yeah. kestrels. So uh, like when I go to Africa and I open the bird book and uh, I look and uh, I'm maybe in Kenya and then there's seven different kestrels that I've got to try and identify if I see them. And I've seen up to five different types of kestrels on trips uh, to Africa. 
So it's very different here that we've got um, a sparrowhawk, uh, we've got a goshawk. So they're two similar birds, but the goshawk is much bigger and much rarer. And then as small falcons go, it's pretty simple in the UK. We've got kestrels, we've got merlins, and then we've got hobbies, which uh, again are rarer. Merlins are rarer as well. Uh, and they have uh, particular places that they live in a way. Um, hobbies can crop up sort of anywhere, but um, in general, it's a rare thing to see those. Um, so if you see a falcon uh, in this country, on the smaller size, it's nearly always a kestrel. And then you go up to the peregrines, um, you know, sort of size of birds. So we have, you know, a limited, a limited sort of, uh, if I see a kestrel, I just see a kestrel and I don't need to identify what type of kestrel because it's our common kestrel. So Amethyst Girl asks, do kestrels teach their young to hunt? And if not, which raptors do? <laughs> yeah, so th there is, um, you know, we've seen the, the barn owls this year actually bringing in live shoes to the nest and we don't know whether that's been an accident or slightly deliberate. And some birds definitely do uh, teach their young to hunt like peregrine falcons. They will bring in injured um, uh, prey items and then release them in, in midair as the young come in. Quite often they do an aerial changeover in midair, so sometimes they'll drop a dead quarry. But they also drop injured uh, quarry for their for their young. Uh, but a lot of, a lot of it with most birds of prey, it's actually just practicing. So when these birds fledge, they're fairly well looked after for a few weeks by the parents, and in that time they spend a lot of time actually practicing to hunt. But the more skilled the hunting is, uh, the harder it is for that young bird to. Uh, uh, reach adult, adulthood like the peregrine falcons, they've got to learn how to do a skillful bit of hunting. Whereas the tawny owl can simply survive by jumping onto the floor, sitting in a branch, jumping on the floor and uh, eating worms, moths, and then eventually moving on to catching bigger prey items uh, like the voles and uh, small birds. So Sue Ringle on YouTube asks, average clutch size of kestrels? Kestrels, uh, they normally lay five eggs, uh, but this year, if you watch a YouTube video, this is something I've never seen before myself. Uh, she had two eggs broken, one by tawny owls, one by jackdaws, and she laid seven eggs. So I've never ever known a kestrel lay seven eggs uh, within this area. I've had the odd clutch of six, um, but this is uh, their clutch this year. Uh, so that's the male kestrel leaving the nest. Nest changeover, the female comes in. So in kestrels and peregrines, uh, the male and female will share the incubating. The female definitely does the most hours. Um, and then this is uh, not a good moment. She's laid three eggs and we've got a jack dog got in there and uh, broken one of the eggs. And then this is what she's got to cope with at night. Bomber, our male taught me out. Um, and then during the day we've got barn owls challenging her at the nest. Uh, so. Uh, so yeah, so she has <laughs> she has a work cut out uh, in this valley, and this is this sort of behaviour is replicated across the countryside. All these dramas, but the great thing we have here is all these cameras feeding back live images, recording those dramatic moments, and then we're able to share those with you guys. Leslie B on YouTube asks: Are kestrels the only bird of prey that can hover? Oh, they're the best at hovering, I would say, kestrels. Uh, so uh, there is other birds that can hover. You've got ospreys that will hover. You've got buzzards that will hover. But they, in general, uh, you know, an osprey can uh, hover without much wind. In general, um, the more wind is, that's available, the more birds that can try and hover. But obviously, kingfishers will hover really well. Uh, but the kestrels, to me, in, in our country, they're the master of the hovering because the wind is blowing and catching up draft and the hovering and their head uh, stays absolutely motion, motionless uh, as their body sort of moves and uh, uh, it's like a gimbal, <laughs> like a camera gimbal, their head stays still. Um, Rigoberto Brightman asks, do kestrels push their young out? Yes, they do, yeah, yeah. So m most birds of prey will uh, push their young out. So the tawny owls here have really they're ferocious, they really push their young out uh, immediately. Kestrels, uh, I've seen our kestrels this year chasing other kestrels away and I presume it could be their young, it could be young from another uh, nest nearby. 
but yeah they're very active throughout the winter and especially getting into spring they'll push their young out but the original Mr Kes as I said before had two female kestrels here breeding so the first female is main mates would lay a clutch of eggs uh, and then when she was happily sitting on the eggs he would go off down the valley and uh, start courting and then this next cl clutch of eggs would be laid by the other female. That's really good. Shady Lady asks how big are their territories and how do they mark territories? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so with all, all predators, the size of their territory depends on the size of the prey items within that territory. So if they've got a lot of ideal habitat, their territory will generally be smaller. Uh, so, and it's the same whether it's a, a tiger or a kestrel, you know, the, the, they, they have a space that they need to survive and they don't generally have a lot more space than that because there's another pair of kestrels on either side pushing up to their boundaries. So our kestrels, I've seen them fly um, what about a mile, mile or so, uh, but usually they stay within about half a mile of here in a, in a circle around us. The, there is other kestrels, and they will overlap a little bit, but uh, you know things get a little bit feisty in the air when they do. So that's all of our kestrel questions. There's just one here about uh, from Grandad Rufus on YouTube. Mm -hmm. He says, "Heard you are putting up a little owl nest. Is it a natural nest box, or uh, or is it one you've made? <laughs> and is it inside or outside?" Uh, so I'm going to be putting up uh, maybe one more than one little owl nest box. Little owls are tremendously difficult to get into nest boxes. Uh, there is some designs that have corridors and these corridors and tight spaces are really important. So little owls won't generally nest in a nest that you can simply look into because if you can look into that nest, other bigger owls um, will be able to get in there and predate, predate them. So they generally will go in a hole size that's quite small and then it'll actually twist around and then drop into a chamber. Uh, so to recreate a nest box like that it is absolutely crucial that uh, it has to be all tucked away and quite dark for little owls. So I'm going to build um, definitely more than one nest, nest site and hopefully I crack it so I will utilise hollow trees and see what I can do with those. I've collected some hollow branches and trunks and I'm going to see if I can fashion one into a little owl box. So it will, it will be a natural looking nest site but it will be man-made. Two valleys over that way, I've got um, a huge elm a piece of elm that's about 30 stone and that I've made actually little corridors in there because jackdaws are the same size and they will overthrow a little else so I've got to make it jackdaws like to carry lots of twigs in there so I, if I make uh, little corridors with uh, little turns in the jackdaws go in with sticks and they get really frustrated when they go in with a stick in the beak and they can't get around the corners so I always make it quite tricky for the little owls uh, to get in there, which they like, because it stops other things getting in there. That's all the questions for today. All right, well, thank you for joining me. We're gonna leave uh, a few suggestions of videos to watch if you want to learn more about these guys. But thanks all for your support, and uh, we'll catch up with you tomorrow. And sorry for the delay today.